Now, Cerulean is a leading provider of billing, charging and customer management systems, whose customers include G4S, 3UK and the US cable and broadband giant Cox Communications. Well, the company, which originated from the in-house customer care and billing product division of Logica, today reported a 47% rise in full-year pre-tax profits to £10.9 million. Pounds. Joining me now is the chief executive of Cerulean, Louis Hall. Louis, welcome. To you, I mean, the global economy clearly right. is slowing, but I mean, do you think this is helping you because it means that customers will seek more efficiency savings? Yes, I, I think so. I, I think the reality is that tel telecoms businesses are in the midst of massive investment cycles in 5G mobile and more fibre uh, broadband rollout, and you know that 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 is um, that is then driving them to look at the ancillary software systems that sit around those networks that we provide. And, and the, the, those solutions, um, you know, are increasingly required to be more flexible so that telcos can pivot quickly as market conditions change, enable them to change products and processes more quickly to adapt to, uh, to changing circumstances. And I, I think although we've perhaps seen downturn in, in, in the broader tech economy, um, telcos are providing essential mission critical infrastructure uh, and if you look at the shift to remote working in, engendered by the pan pandemic, then you know that that's a trend that isn't going away soon. So, so I think that's uh, the, one of the things that we're benefiting from. You're not worried about the the fact that a lot of these companies are laying off people right now. It's not, eventually they're not going to start turning to their to the, the amount of capital they're investing. Um, well, I, I think in, in a sense that that's a bit of an opportunity for us because we we have experienced a very hot labour market based in the UK, but also in India where we employ quite a few people as well. And you know, so I think we'll see some benefit from from that to an extent as as, as people more people come into the market into the job market. Um, so that will I think will help with our growth. But I don't think telcos are, are looking to to scale back uh, anytime soon. Uh, these are very long term investment cycles. Uh, Hundreds of billions being invested, and and you know the, that that's not a, a juggernaut that's about to grind to a halt. I don't think. Looking at the uh, statement today, you, you point out you've just won your biggest ever new contract with cable and wireless Seychelles. Does this sort of mark a, a step up in the kind of contracts that you're now winning? Well, it's very interesting because the the, the deal in the Seychelles, um, although it's our largest ever deal, it's it's a relatively small customer. We have much bigger customers than than than, than cable and wireless Seychelles. But it's it's part of a trend where we're seeing, instead of simply providing a software solution and a support and maintenance contract, we're now providing the software as a service. This is part of the software as a service revolution that's talked a lot about in, in the media. And um, that involves not just providing the, the software license and support, but also hosting the solution, managing the solution on behalf of the customer. Uh, so essentially, the, the, the customer just logs in and uses the, uses the system or the systems. And... Of course, that's over a typically five, in this case, a 10-year term contract. So we're seeing longer contract terms, lots more recurring revenue, which obviously is really important to the visibility and, and, and longer term growth. Now, we've talked a lot about telcos and uh, tech. I mean, it's worth pointing out you do have customers in other spaces as well, such as healthcare and financial services. How, how are they trading? Yeah, I think it's a mixed bag, and, and what we're doing there is is really quite a, a, a thin slice of our overall solution. So essentially, leveraging the experience we got in telecoms out to generic subscription billing for you know it could be financial services, it could be healthcare, it could be retail, um, and, and then, you know to ha have to say for full disclosure, that's a relatively small amount of our overall revenue. Uh, but I think obviously in, in sectors which are impacted, like retail, uh, for example, we're we're, we're seeing um, some weakness, and, and obviously strength other services that are that are faring better so i think it's a mixed bag you touched just now on the fact that the labor markets are quite tight i mean you've been doing a lot of hiring you've, you've got operations here in london but also in india and in bulgaria as well are the labor markets as tight there as they are in this country no i think there are some unique facets of, of uk labor market um and you know that's partly why last year we we did a decide to open up in in Bulgaria and uh, it's re recruit heavily there, um, partly, partly in response to some of the tightening of you know UK UK labour market. And in terms of the uh, skills base, why did you alight on Bulgaria in particular? Well, there's a very strong um, software engineering um, educational. Um, 
infrastructure in Bulgaria and also quite a lot of European telcos in Sofia. So there was a readily available base of people who were very well educated, but also had the particular experience we, we, were, we were looking for in the, tel, in the telecoms business. So, so that was uh, those were the key drivers. Uh, also, okay. obviously, you know, co cost is a factor. I mean, you know, the labor costs are somewhat lower in Bulgaria than some other parts of Europe. All right. Although, Louis, sure. we're out of time, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to have to cut you off. Good to talk to you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.